Well, good morning, everybody. Well, I just came back from the post office, and sure enough, the package from Don has arrived. <clears throat> oh, let's open it up. Well, I've been spinning, well, I'd say about 15 minutes trying to get the right camera angle for this box, because it's huge. And I tried to get it so I'm out of the uh, view with my body, but there's nothing I can do about it. I can't recall the fellow's screen name, Don, uh, engineer or something like that. Uh, but I looked on the uh, comments and I couldn't find it, but he did comment and uh, he said he don't mind his name being on there. His name is Don Mangold and he's out of Georgia and he's a wonderful gentleman and I have talked to him uh, on the phone uh, several times. In fact, he called me last night and wanted to know if the package had arrived. And as of last night, it did not. Uh, you know, as of yesterday afternoon, I should say. So, um, what I'm going to do here is unpack it one piece at a time. And it looks like the first piece... Uh, can't quite tell. Got a lot of wrapping here. And it's probably uh, the frequency counter. I think. I think that's what it is. Yes, and I'm going to get my magnifier out here. It's a Lodestar frequency counter. Model 5270. Um, real nice looking one. It's got UHF and high frequency inputs on it. And it runs on batteries or a, um, a wall wart. And that would look really good up here on the shelf. We'll just set it there so it don't get damaged. We'll get there. <laughs> Got it packed real well. Okay, here's the wall wart for the um, frequency counter. I'm hoping this is coming out on video. Let me see if I can monitor it. Look in the back. I had to set my tripod up. Let's see, okay, I, the, the screen is only an inch and a half on this Kodak, so I have to see if I'm in camera, and the only way I can do that is to move my hand across it. Okay, now, this looks like the Ico 235 VTVM. Oh, that's a beauty. That is a beauty. Yes, that is a beauty, and this is all calibrated. He calibrated this. Um, Don told me he has, you know, he has the high-end equipment, uh, the real good stuff, and he calibrated all all these uh, pieces and uh, rebuilt them as as well. Uh, for now, we'll just set that up here. That's not where it's going to stay. Probably where the ICO 324 will go, and that's the next thing in the box here. I'll give you a closer examination of these pieces once I get all this packing material out of the way. Okay. Alright, what I'm going to do is uh, turn off the camera and get this bench cleaned off a little bit so you can see get a better look at this equipment. Now all Don wants out of this is the $41 and change for shipping. Well I'm going to send him a little more than that but uh, he restored and calibrated this as well and put a BNC on here, which is what I did on the one I had. So that's great. 
So he also put on a polarized two prong plug. And I'll probably leave it just as is because if it's polarized, it's going to go, you know, it's going to be okay. So you're not going to have a, a hot chassis, although these are have these have transformers in them anyways. So um all right. So I want to show you the other units because I think you most most of you people out there know what a 324 ICO looks like. And uh, we'll put that over here because I want you to look at the VTVM, uh, which is a real beauty. Let's see, will that fit on the shelf here? I think it. I think it will. Once I get the probe out of here. I hope you can see okay without my body in the way all the time. Um, on this, he put labels on it. These holes were here. You got the AC balance, AC calibration, minus DC and plus DC. These holes were here. He informed me that that's the way it came and he just labeled them. It's a real nice piece of equipment. It's a uh, I guess it's the higher end of the ICO line and uh, we don't have to worry about isolation because I'm sure he's, we can turn this right on here I'll get some glasses so I can see what I'm doing. I've been very busy so I haven't even had a chance to answer any comments or approve any comments on my ICO uh, 950 capacitor bridge that I got from eBay. I've just been so busy so very busy here. When I get in at night, by the time I get through uh, on the internet and everything, uh, I just skim through the comments and I approve them and then I try to answer them later on. Um, so let's see now. Uh, we got to... Before we turn that on, we got to center that um, pointer. I got no. I haven't figured out how I'm going to hang my tools yet because I don't know where I'm going to hang them. So let's. Uh, okay. All right, she's right on. All right, now let's turn it on. Uh, where is the on/off switch? Right here. I love that pilot light. That's what I'm going to do with. Um, all my equipment that don't have pilot lights, including this um, Variac panel here. All right, so we'll let it warm up. All right, let's put it on DC volts. And we'll zero the meter. This zero works on ohms as well as uh, your voltage settings to set it on the zero mark. Uh, this control here is just for the ohms, so you don't need to touch that when you're on the voltage ranges. So uh, let's let's try um, see if that'll reach. Hang on a minute. I'm going to put the uh, power supply on here. All right, I got the, my tri-power supply turned on. Now, I haven't done anything with this. It's set on the fixed 5-volt output here, and uh, the meter don't read all the way over the 5 volts, so we're not worried about that because i got to make adjustments on this meter. I'm just checking. I'm just running this uh, VTVM to its paces here. Um, what I'm going to do is... Um, put my digital meter on that first and check for 5 volts. As I recall, I think it was um, read higher on a digital meter than it reads here. Alright, it's reading 5.02 volts. So the meter here is off 
compared to what this is, but this is a fixed um, output. In other words, um, regardless of the way you move this, this is a fixed 5 volt output on this particular setting. So the digital meter reads 5.02. Of course, we're not going to be able to read that 02 on the VTVM, but um, we will put this down to the VTVM now. All right, I'm going to have to digital zoom. I hate it, but the meter's up on the on the um, shelf here. All right. Well. That's it, she's already zoomed in. Not a very good, uh, I hate using digital zoom, I hate it. But she's reading uh, very close to 5 volts, but let me uh, put my digital meter on here. You know, with the vacuum tube volt meter, of course, so it, you really need to let them run for a while to tubes to warm up and stabilize. Any of this vacuum tube equipment, you do not just turn it on and, and start using it. you got to let them stabilize and warm up because they are actually tubes. Alright, so I'm 5.02 here. I don't know if you can see through me, but um, 5.02. And uh, as close as I can read that, it's just about it. Right on. Um, now we go to the 15 volt scale, which will be... Uh, Fifteen will be this scale right here, the next one down. So five volts will be... No, am I reading the right scale now? Yeah, five, five is right here. Right here. Zero, one, two, three, four, and five. It's right there. But I uh, think we can work with this one for the ICO. Um, well, we need it for the uh, frequency counter. We'll have to use a scope probe. So what I'm going to do, what I'm going to do here is we're going to take the uh, ICO, and I, I don't even know if I'm in camera. I'm tripping over the damn tripod legs because uh, I couldn't get back far enough with the, I, I got to get a video set up here with the camera overhead. But the problem is wherever I put it, my damn head's in the way. Everything you know, I, you can't see what I'm doing because I'm in the way. So I haven't figured out how I'm going to do that yet. All right, so I've got a, I've got a BNC cable here with uh, open ends. I guess you can see that. I can't see the damn viewfinder now anyway. So what we're going to do is we're going to plug in the ICO 324 now. I left the VTVM on to let it stabilize. And... Uh, Plug the beat ICO in here, and uh, I don't know, is it on? There's no light. Oh, didn't turn the outlet strip on. Cut the outlet strip on. I think I turned it on. Yeah, it's on. Oh yeah, okay, there it is. Okay. All right, now. Let's see if we can jury rig up a, a cable to go to the frequency counter here. I'll get myself situated here. It's going to take a while. There's just so many things going on. I appreciate all this stuff I'm getting. But, um... I try to answer all the comments, and I'm getting way behind on that. Way behind. And then I went on the eBay uh, and got... Um, a, a used, it says, bright and functioning iTube for $9 free shipping. Um, one of the two places that was recommended to me wanted 18 or 20 some dollars for the tube plus $8.50 to ship it. And that's for, I think, a used one. So I do better with eBay. 
it's kind of a crapshoot with eBay, but it, the seller uh, that I got the 950 capacitor bridge was a wonderful seller and refunded my money. But I don't, don't expect that. If I get a bad tube, I'll probably out of luck on that. Uh, let's see now. Power. Yeah, I like that. A nice display. Easier to read than the red. Alright, now, what I gotta do is to couple this to this. So let me see what kind of a jury rig of cables I can come up with here. Alright, now, I've got my direct connection cables from my uh, NLS 215 uh, portable oscilloscope. So, we'll connect these to this here. Alright, all right, we're connected up. Let's get these cables up and out of the way here. Make sure they're not going to short out and knock out my signal here. Alright, now, band A, modulation off. Okay, we're on, we're on external modulation. In other words, there's no modulation unless you flip it over to internal. So, um, all right, we're at 100. And this is the lowest end now. We're on, the, on band uh, A, which I think is 150 kC, but I could be wrong. All right, it seems to be right on 150. All right, um, just to give you an example of how that works. All right, I just compared uh, this frequency counter with the Fluke 1910A. And uh, after the decimal point, I'm reading uh, 161 and then it goes down to 111 and it's, it's moving a lot over here after the decimal point and it's not the signal generator apparently the frequency counter isn't stable like this one so this is a much better frequency counter than the one I got off of eBay they paid sixty dollars for that count and shipping but that only goes up to I think either 125 megs or um, 250 megs. This one goes up to 1.2 gigs. Depends on where you put it in. This is the VHF, the high frequency, I should say, and the UHF. And um, in the uh, high frequency, it's 10 cycles to 15 megacycles. And on the uh, UHF, it's 10 megacycles to 1.2 gigahertz. So. Um, this is a lot better. Now, let me just take you up to my frequency counter, the one I bought it off of eBay. Take note of that last reading. Now, 150 stays stable, but uh, on my frequency counter, they, these numbers vary a lot. So, let me just plug it up onto the other frequency counter here. Okay, this is mine. I, actually, I got the zoom on here, and I don't need to. But you can see how much that's varying, and it's on auto. So um, I was getting that same variations with my uh, function generator, and I thought, well, the function generator is probably going all over the place, when actually this is the problem. So I got a much better frequency counter um, from Don than the one I got from eBay. But it's it's solid here. It's just the last after the decimal point. I guess it's not a big deal, but you can see that it does vary quite a bit compared to the one I got from Don. There is variation because you're going to get that in a tube uh, signal generator anyways. But you can see how very little that varies. So this generator is uh, pretty much right on. Um, I have. Let's go up higher on this and see what we can do. What I'm going to do is I'm going to set it all the way up to band F, which is primarily harmonics. 
let's see what it calls for here for a top end here. Band E D. You have to excuse me again. I'm having a hard time seeing things here. 135 megacycles on on band. F2. So actually F1 is, from what I understand, is fundamentals, and that's 37 to 145 megacycles. So there is only one setting, of course, for band F. So the band F2 is actually no other settings on this. What it is is the harmonics, like your second harmonic. So we'll just concentrate on the 37 to 145 megacycles. So we're going to start at the low end now. I don't think this thing's registering right because here it says kilohertz and megahertz and the red dot stays down on the um, kilohertz. And I'm in into the megahertz range on this thing on the signal generator. I just switched it down to 5 megahertz on band D here, which is you reading this scale down here. And I got the RF on about three quarters up. And actually the RF fine is up high. So I should be pumping in megahertz in that thing. But I'm still reading in the kilohertz. It never goes up here. The only time it goes up here is if I put the period on. Then it jumps up there, but then I don't get nothing here. All right. Well, that's 5 megahertz, so she's right on. Right on with the dial here. Okay, I have to go out now. Got to finish up here. Uh, and we'll work with more with this stuff later on. But I want to thank you for watching. And um, I ordered the iTube and the um, voltage control. And I think it's a 20, no, it's a, a 5 watt. So I got ordered that and I got to get a list of parts together and um, see what else it needs. Thank you very much, Don. I appreciate it very, very much. Once again, all I can say is thank you. I have some wonderful friends out there in YouTube land. Take care, everyone, and thanks for watching.